Frontline healthcare workers demand to be heard and protected from COVID-19 as they worry about being exposed, but many are afraid to speak up. And 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears uncovered that might be because the system is stacked against them. The system has definitely failed me. Helen Armstrong has been fighting a years long battle after initiating an OSHA investigation in 2014, one that didn't go well for her. She reported medical safety concerns at the clinic where she'd worked for decades. And though OSHA did document violations, Helen was eventually fired. When pursuing a whistleblower retaliation claim, she was shocked to learn how the Nevada OSHA system is set up, with OSHA actually answering to the Department of Business and Industry. I always thought business and industry was to take care of uh, you know, the, the problems of the businesses. Nothing related to OSHA on serious infractions that happen. But in fact, um, they're the higher power. They're the ones that rule Nevada OSHA. They tell them what to do. Who's the master that's gonna be served, I suppose. Rick Lucas is a former Nevada OSHA investigator who was assigned to Helen's case. The command was made to close the case he was so disturbed by how Helen was treated, he quit in frustration. I have no faith that Nevada OSHA would uh, investigate that whistleblower's complaint and um, come up with, you know, a good investigation uh, or, uh, or a, le a legitimate investigation. He says the system doesn't make sense, having the agency with a mission to protect workers under the department whose objective, in part, is to encourage and promote the development and growth of business. And it does seem to kind of run counter that they would be in charge of Nevada OSHA, which is basically uh, in charge of uh, uh, taking the bad players out or correct, uh, correcting bad behavior from employers. I mean, certainly that would be a conflict. Nevada's Department of Business and Industry told 13 Investigates all of these things can and do exist together without conflict. They declined further comment due to Helen's ongoing lawsuit, which is under appeal. But Helen's case is just one example. Rick says the conflicts at OSHA run dangerously deep. When he started there in 2012, he discovered a secret that wasn't so hush-hush, something he says his supervisors made clear was an unwritten rule. You know, the understanding was uh, uh, willful violations would not be written up. Willful violations are the most serious transgressions OSHA can write up against an employer. The penalty, which was just increased last October, is more than $132,000 compared to just over $13,000 for a serious violation. According to 2018 numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Nevada has a higher percentage of workplace injuries and illnesses than the national average. But even in a case involving multiple fatalities, willful violations don't always stick. 13 Investigates obtained audio recordings from Seth Isaacs, an advocate working for Helen. He's talking with Jess Lankford, the head of Nevada OSHA, about an accident at the Orleans in 2007. Two men died working in an underground sewer release system after being exposed to toxic fumes. Hydrogen sulfide or something like that. <laughs> they were cited willful because we had addressed the issue of confined space entry with them months prior to this fatal event. And the coach show cited it as willful, multiple willful violations and a very large fine. But the willful violation was dropped down, Jess claims, after higher ups from Nevada's Department of Business and Industry got involved. They go behind the doors, they have a conversation, and they come out with serious violations instead of willful violations. In 2016, a worker died when scaffolding collapsed at Tivoli Village. Nevada OSHA cited the company with two serious violations and one for regulatory notices. Uh, it was just, you know, frowned upon that anyone would uh, try and write a willful violation. Just, just that cut and dry. 13 Investigates obtained statistics going back to 2015. We found 78 willful violations issued out of over 11,000 citations. Nevada OSHA has received an average of 1,042 complaints each year since 2015.
But in 2020, a drastic spike, 1,800 before the end of May, many of those related to COVID-19. Helen's advocate argues many of those complaints need to be investigated by an OSHA office free from influence. Especially at a time like this, when we need to count on government the most to trust what they're telling us with safety and health, um, there's no way that business can control these items in the manner that they are. We reached out to Boyd Gaming regarding the Orleans case. They said they had no comment. We have the full statement from the Nevada Department of Business and Industry on our website at KTNV.com. Darcy Spears, 13, investigates.